now we will know about communication process so what is communication process the simplest model of communication process can be sender message and receive the model indicates the essential elements of communication which the sender and one receiver and the message that is exchanged between them if any one of three elements is missing communication does not take place however the process of communication in much more complex phenomenon consisting of at least five element which are subjected to various influences the mode can be put as senders encoding channel decoding understanding by receiver source in this model the first element is the source of communication from where the communication or originates the source or sender can be a person a number or of person or even a machine the sender initiate communication because he has sc needs thought idea or information that he wishes to convey to the other person person or machine for if for example an accidental fire has broken out in a part of godown in the factory the security officer source will need to convey the message immediately to the fire station receiver fires or fire alarm machine will do the same or place at the security officer encoding message the next element in the process is that of encoding the information to be transmitted encoding enables the thoughts to be put in the form of symbols normally language provides the symbols that are used in the transmission of thoughts to another person however language is not the only means to convey the thoughts needs or information there are non verbal means example gesture which provides another form term which thoughts can be transmitted the more complex the ideas needs or information to be communicated the more complex becomes the process of encoding them while an involuntary sharik may adequately convey the degree of alarm felt by the victim even a carefully ordered worded statement or letter may fail to convey the essential purpose of the communication this can be happen if the language or symbols used convey different meaning to the sender and the receiver encoding of the thoughts pro- pro- produces a message that can be either verbal or non verbal verbal message is in the form of words and language while non verbal would be in the form of body gesture like wink smile grunt frown wave of hand etc channel the next element in the process of communication is channel through which the communication is transmitted it is the link that joins the sender and the receiver the most commonly used channel are sight and sound in the organizational environment the channel could take the form of face to face conversation written memos telephonic exchange group meetings etc outside the organization the channels would be letter a circle circulars magazine radio programs or tv shows etc for communication to be effective the channel used should be appropriate for the message as well as the receiver for an urgent message telegram telephone or radio would be the appropriate channel 
again the channel chosen would be influenced by the consideration as to whom the message is being directed decoding decoding and understanding the message constitute the last two elements in the process of communication from sender to receiver the receiver in the first instance receives the message and decode it that is to say interprets and translates it into thoughts understanding and desired response a successful communication occurs when a receiver decodes the message and attaches a meaning to it in which very nearly approximates the idea thoughts of thoughts or information the sender wishes to transmit decoding and understanding are affected by several factors for example a receiver cannot decode a message which is in a language not known by known to him this applies to symbols also the same symbols may carry a different meaning to the receiver again the receiver's past experience as well as his expectations color the meaning that is attached to the message all this tends to bring about a divergence between the intended meaning and perceived meaning in order that this does not happen it is necessary to involve develop greater degree of homogeneity between the sender and the receiver both of whom have their own field of experience the field of experience constitutes an individual's attitudes experience knowledge environment and socio culture background the greater the overlap of the source and receiver's field of experience the greater the probability of successful communication in other words they have thing in common that facilitate better communication an individual engaged in communication with another person or uh, of a significantly different educational or cultural background will have to put in greater effort to ensure successful communication a model of communication credited to wilbur scarm illustrates this point the greater the overlap of two persons field of experience the higher is the probability of successful communication the shaded area shows the overlap feedback response and feedback complete the two way com- process of communication it is through the feedback that the source comes to know if the message was correctly received and understood in case it is found that the message has been received incorrectly it is possible to make correction subsequently if response is timely sender's effort to communicate are aimed at eliciting the desired response however a communication may result in producing any of three outcomes a desired change may occur an undesired change may occur or no change may take place we consider communication as successful only when it produces the desired response noise surrounding the entire spectrum of communication is the noise that affects the accuracy and fidelity fidelity of the message communication communicated noise is the factor that disturbs confuses or otherwise interferes with communication it can arises at any stage in the communication process this sender may not be able to encode the message properly or he may not be properly audible the message may get diverted by other sound in the environment the receiver may not hear the message or 
comprehend it with in a manner not entirely intended by the sender of the message the channel also may create interference by filtering that is allowing some information to pass through and disallowing others in uh, in any case there is so much of noise or interference in the entire process that there is every possibility of the communication being distorted we will see later in this unit why distortion takes place and what can be done to minimize the distortion of communication